when you're getting started in business and you don't have a network, you don't have connections, I mean, you kind of have to be more innovative than any of your competitors if if you want to get a foothold in it. Um, and you've and you've done that time and time and time again. Um, to kind of share that story about uh, cannabis clinics, or sorry, Canadian cannabis clinics and Canvas RX. Um, I remember you came over to my office with your partner at the time with a investment yeah, check to um, put some money into that when you guys were just starting to raise your uh, first first rounds of funding. Mm -hmm. And it was the same week that I had another lawyer come into my office, try to buy my book of business for cents on a dollar. I think you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, when I looked at that, I was like, dude, they're not going to approve this, man. They're not going to legalize weed in Canada. That's not happening. <laughs> and here we are in 2020. It's like fully legal. You can buy whatever you want from, like the government is now the drug dealer. Yeah. Um, you know, you came up with this concept of um, kind of kind of cracking the legislative code that was coming through the pipelines for the approval for additional use. Um, and I mean, <sighs> embarrass me here, but I know all the information is public, but Obviously, I passed on the opportunity as an early investor, mm -hmm. and um, you know, you sold to a much larger corporation, Aurora Cannabis. How much did I lose out on? I mean, you must have walked away with a triple, quadruple, even larger digit multiple, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not so good at doing the math in my head, but um, you would so have invested at a, a six million dollar valuation. I think we, you were talking about maybe investing, let's say, a hundred grand, yeah, and a six million dollar valuation. We sold the company for a purchase price of $37 million. So there's a six bagger right there. But the thing was, is that a big chunk of the purchase price was paid in Aurora stock at 40 cents. Uh, over the next two years, Aurora went from 40 cents to $16. So with that, that's another 20 bagger on top of that. So yeah. you're, you're, you know, your hundred grand could have turned into a lot of money is, yeah. is what it boiled down to. And in that case, you know, <laughs> to be fair it wasn't that i was uh i i didn't it wasn't a legal kind of analysis i just kind of saw where the the trend line was pointing which was cannabis was becoming ubiquitous you know they had essentially created a program where they were creating these large corporations growing cannabis you know once you create that kind of capital markets dynamic um it's going to be hard to turn back the engine uh that that was the insight there i think you know one of my and it has nothing to do with being a lawyer. I just, I think I've been gifted with an ability to see where trend lines are going by and large in the future um, and uh, getting in front of that. And certainly, you know, uh, from cannabis to now field trip, that's one of those things, which was, this is going to happen. You know, most people don't realize it was going to happen. And for a long time, I wasn't convinced, but then certain things fell into place. And now like, you know, I guess that was six years ago we met in your office and, and we're on the cusp of legalizing cannabis. And, and you know, six years later, uh, we're on the cusp of legalizing psychedelics uh, as well, um, you know, which yeah. is crazy. I, I, seven years ago, I would never would have guessed we'd be sitting in this position. But uh, no, I was, we, dude, I was sitting there going, this is, this is not, I, I just can't see this happening. I just can't see them allowing, you know, the Canadian population to just, you know, recreationally i mean like even at the time you were talking about medicinal use which which had uh you know proven peer reviewed benefits um mm -hmm. you know it existed right so and then it was kind of supposed to lean into um recreational use and that of course happened very quickly soon after so um yeah bravo i mean like you you know you you uh you know you took a stake in the industry you saw a trend coming and it ended up working out for you i mean um had I had I invested that hundred grand uh, at that time, I could have probably bought a Ferrari LaFerrari, a Porsche 918, uh, maybe a McLaren P1 and a Bugatti Veyron just to kind of top it all off instead of the one R8 that I've got right now. But, you know, um, I didn't have a crystal ball to appear into the future. None of us do. It's just one of those things that you have to take uh, take a stab at in life. And at that time you were you were playing hard to win and it, and it was a bit of a gamble, but it, you know, it paid off big time for you. Um, you know, thankfully with, with the organizations and some of the guys that, you know, we've all talked to and, um, you know, been at uh, men's retreats and uh, groups with, I also made some subsequent investments that still caught like the top end of the trend, um, and made Great. some money there as well. But, uh.